Okay, hello everybody, welcome back. So what we're gonna do again this time is do a voiceover for a draft that I did without sound. Uh, this is kind of an embarrassing draft because I managed to three for one myself and still end up doing pretty well. Uh, so there was definitely an embarrassing moment, but hopefully it's an important lesson for you guys as well. That's why I make these things so that I can punt so you don't have to. So as you can see in this pack, we open Sarkin. Uh, by far, it's the best pack one, pick one. Uh, second best option here is probably uh, the card draw spell. Uh, here, I took Ral's Outburst over Obnixilis' Cruelty, just more upside, and we're already one of these two colors. Ral's Outburst is really good. It can filter lands later in the game. It not only replaces itself, it, it, I mean, it can, also, it can often just also act as a, as a land filter as well. You know, you not only get a spell, but you know, you, you either ditch a land, uh, it's just not Mixos' Cruelty here, but you can, you can ditch a land. Even if you get two spells in a Spells Matter deck, you can have an extra spell in your graveyard for later value off uh, you know, the Cyclops Electromancer or whatever else. So here I think I get like four of Mixos eventually, but I'm taking it over the Flux Channeler. Same thing, another Obnixilus, and I think I'm going to get not Obnixilus, like another Rails Outburst in this pack, or uh, not just a Laza Tap Reaver over Aid the Fallen. But I'm also taking note of the Thunder Drake in this pack. But when in doubt, take the lower, uh, lower costed spell. Yeah, now it's just the Spark Reaper. Or I guess band together. And the Radic Visionary is the other decent card, but the more I play this format, the more I realize like how much worse Erratic Visionary is versus the Burning Prophet. It's not even a it's not even a contest. Pretty sure I just take yeah, I take the behemoth to cut continue cutting black. Now this is where I take Spellkeeper Weird over Gateway Plaza. And this was a difficult decision, but in retrospect, it was the it was the right one. But if it could have gone either way, I wouldn't fault anybody for taking a gateway plaza there. And it was a close call because this is only my second card. But I'm also thinking that, you know, if I can wheel the, uh, the Aid the Fallen Spellkeeper as an infinite combo with Aid the Fallen. So here, probably taking a Wonder Strike, thinking about this, you know, splash possibility, the Fairy's Time Twist, and Gil Globe to help play Sarkhan. So right now, I'm thinking I'm really getting cut off in red. We didn't see any additional red. Got a lot of black, a little bit of blue. So looking at this pack, I'm just tempted to take something like uh, Kala's Dismissal over Wonder, over the de de Deliver On to Evil. In fact, I think I real Deliver On to Evil. And now I'm giving another chance for blue. Now it's an Electric Pyromancer. Initially, I thought I could play it with something like the Fairy's Time Twist, but ultimately, I ended up not having to play Time Twist in this deck. So Tamu's Epiphany, I'm pretty sure, is the pick from this pack. Tamiyo's Epiphany ended up being very well. It helps me dig to Sarkhan. Uh, probably just a Mana Geode. I think that's what I took to make sure I can splash Sarkhan along with Guild Globe. And I think I reeled the Interplanar Beacon from this pack, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so here it's between uh, like No Escape, Casmino's Transmutation, and Fibbletip. And again, I think I took No Escape uh, because I have Electromancer. Or, yeah, I don't think I took Fibbit. This is not something that wins, wins drafts. Or maybe I took Kazmina's, I don't remember what I took. Yeah, probably just, yeah, No Escape. I think the deciding factor was uh, uh, the Electromancer, which once instance and sorceries in my graveyard. So then I got a Toll of the Invasion, and in this pack, I'm probably looking at something like Unlikely 8, actually. I was thinking about, I mean, the reason, one, one reason I took Unlikely 8 is because I, I want to protect Sarkin. Uh, and here, I got my 8 the Fallen for the Spellkeeper combo. Wield, deliver onto evil. Another No Escape. And now coming up on pack, yeah, this is just the final few picks here. Didn't end up running a uh, giant, just didn't, didn't need it. My deck was very low curve. Wield the beacon 
for Sarkhan and actually did play the Beacon. The, the thing about Sarkhan is it's so strong that uh, it's worth splashing in a deck like this, even if it is double color. But for the most part, I didn't really have too much problem casting it. So this was a difficult pick. So it was between Blast Zone and Ashiok. Uh, or maybe even Flux Channel. And maybe I should have just taken, like, looking back, I'm not sure why I didn't take, I guess I didn't take Flux Channel because I only have, like, Callus Dismissal, Reaver, and Toll of the Invasion for the 1-1s, one -one, so I really didn't have much. So I took Blast, and Blast Zone is the card that I almost, that I ended up blowing myself out later i was showing you match three in the finals is the, the one of the dumbest plays i've ever made just make sure you read the damn card and i've been playing this format for a while but usually i find myself passing blast zone when i open it later and uh but here i took it so tyrant scorn from that pack is pick two and now another rouse outburst which i could easily splash i think between the globe and the mana geode and the and a ton of card draw and I think even right about here, I'm making some cuts. You're going to see me, I think, you're going to see me go take out Deliver Onto Evil quite soon because it's just too much. Too, I don't need like Tamu's Epiphany, Rouse Outburst, Aid the Fallen, Bond of Insight. This is all card draw. And uh, at some point, you reach a level of Dimension Returns. Also, Spellkeeper, weirdest card draw in a way. Eternal Taskmaster. I didn't get to trigger this once, but in part because I'm only playing like six creatures. And maybe even less with the final build. I don't remember exactly. All right. So from this pack, I think I take a bleeding edge over the fourth. Oh, yeah, there's the other odd mix of cruelty I was talking about, but I'm pretty sure I take a bleeding edge here just for diversification purposes. I think I have it on pause. Yeah, let's keep playing. Yeah, I think that's the right pick. And I cut, yeah, I ended up cutting both no escapes. Just because the strength level of this deck is already quite high. So here I'm looking at actually either Sky Theater Strix or Invade the City, and I took the cheaper card. Now I take Roll Reversal. Obviously, it's uh, quite strong. This is the last card. The, this is the last chance for me to get it before the pack that reels. So now this is the first. This is the uh, first pack that I opened. And actually, Roll Reversal didn't really do much this particular draft, as it often does nothing, uh, and I ended up. Sign, signing, uh, boarding it out a couple of times. Okay, so moving along. Soren's Thirst, which I don't want to play. Davriel's Shadowfuge. Managiode, not running the second one. Yeah, so at this point I'm also cutting roll reversal, but I think I end up putting it back in. Or maybe sideboarding it in and out throughout the games, depending on what I'm up against. Yeah. So at this point, looking at my deck, I'm heavily black with a little bit of blue and a little bit of red. So between the Interplanar Beacon for Sarkhan and Guild Globe and Managio plus the card draw, I'm thinking that, you know, with uh, something like Two or three mountains, this should be good enough. So I think I go to like let's see what I end up doing. I think I ended up yeah, going to two mountains, seven swamps. Yeah, that seems reasonable. And then I have one, two, three, four, kind of five sources of red for Sarkim. And this was really weird. So my opponent immediately conceded. I think this may be somebody who was timed out for part of the draft. So that was an uneventful match one. <laughs> uh, and I'll show you how I did in, uh, uh, in match two right now. So 
Now well, fast forward to the boring stuff. I mean, I don't think people want to see this early play. Yeah, so I played Mana, uh, Guild Robe, I want to play Scroll Stinger, I play Sky Theater Strix, um, rather than a Spark Reaper, because I'm thinking I can attack with this, and I'm thinking I don't want to spark, block with Spark Reaper, so kind of a slow start, but Nurture is not something I'm, I'm too concerned about. And for some reason, opponent was not attacking. I'm not sure what he was thinking or what, what his strategy was, but I thought it was the weirdest thing. So I figured, look, if you're not going to attack, then I'll attack. And yeah, and this time I played Spark Reaper, hoping to draw some gas. I think it fast forward just a little bit. So now this is opponent's turn. Yeah, casts uh, Jang Yangu, again doesn't attack, <laughs> passes the turn to me. And I'm thinking, I don't know, maybe he has some sort of two mana spell that he wants to cast on his turn, but it didn't appear that he did. And here I just hit uh, Jang Yangu for one. Yeah, kind of a strange uh, strange play from the opponent. Maybe he's new to the game. I'm really not sure. But between the first guy just outright conceding and, and this opponent showing an, a lack of a willingness to attack, I'm feeling uh, kind of confident. Okay, so here he plays Pollen Bright Druid and proliferates Jang Yangu and Nurture, I believe. Maybe he misclicked. Let's see what happens. So it looks like, yeah, instead of choosing proliferate, he just puts the, chooses to put a counter. So this tells me that opponent kind of doesn't know what he's doing. And again, no attack. Oh, okay, no, sorry, this time he attacks. So I'm drawing, I'm thinking of uh, maybe even block sacking my Spark Reaper, but I changed my mind because I mean, I can take four. Or I guess I do. Never mind. Yeah, I do. I do block sack because I'm thinking that I have like a ton of removal, and I have cards that can deal with uh, a four six. And now I think I immediately on my turn play eight the fallen, getting back Spark Reaper because I probably drew something else like another land. Yeah, I drew an airplane or beacon. And I am getting flooded, but at least I can, you know, get back Spark Reaper and replay it this turn. And again, let's just fast forward a little bit. Yeah, I attack Jang. Yeah, it looks like it, okay, so opponent misclicked, and it looks like he kind of like sacked Pollen Bruid to kill, uh, or yeah, sacked Pollen Bright to kill Pollen Bright. So that's another mistake that he made with Heartfire. Uh, so yeah, it looks like our opponent is kind of new. The first guy can see, the second guy, not really sure how to play. Uh, not much, and it looks like he was mana screwed. At least to some extent, he, he's missed. He missed a couple of land drops. He has a nurture to make up for that, but uh, if I'm not mistaken, he did fall behind on lands a little bit this game. So plays another call slinger, and again attacks just with the nurture. Not what I would have done. I would have also attacked with the call slinger because why not? Okay, so here I get a Callous Dismissal, happily bouncing the Nurture. And I'm still, I mean, I'm still getting him because I'm thinking I can just block sack one of the Crawl Stingers to draw a card. And I'm like one spell away from making a 3-3 with Invade the City. Not that a 3-3 is particularly that much better than a 2-2 on this board given that both of my opponent's creatures have death touch, but at this point, I'm kind of feeling confident that 
I can, at a minimum, draw a card and gain a life by end of this turn. And I'm thinking that I have like three of Mixels as cruelties, plus I have uh, the, uh, what do you call it, Bleeding Edge. So like four out of 24, one in six chance of drawing a premium removal spell. I think he just attacks with Goblin Assault here. And I insta-block with the uh, army, letting that trade resolve. And then he gets a counter on this, on this, on this thing. Okay, so I drew, I fast forward a little bit. So I drew, let me rewind, I guess. Maybe a little too much. Okay, so here I draw a tiny as epiphany. I play it leading up. I guess with Bill Globe, I have access to all mana. And then let's see what I got here. So uh, this leading edge I definitely want. Bond of Insight, I also want. Don't want the island. And then I want to drop leading edge right here to kill one of the stingers. So I put it at the very top, followed by Bond of Insight. And I'm thinking that I can use Bond of Insight to get back like Calus' Missile, Aid the Fallen. I can also cycle Aid the Fallen and uh, Tamiyo's Epiphany. Sorry about that uh, status bar. I just realized that it kind of looks similar with, with the video recording. Yeah, so here I don't hesitate to use uh, Bleeding Edge because I want to get you know continue getting damage through. And I'm also looking at Invade the City as something I want to play at this point with four spells in my in my graveyard. And then I'll have lots of options of what to get back with a Bond of Insight. So. At this point, I'm feeling pretty confident that I'm positioned very well to win. And again, this is what I'm talking about. So opponent's still missing land drops, but manages to find another nurturer going back up to 20. But it doesn't look like his deck is very cohesive. You know, look at how much synergy we have going on, whereas our opponent's just kind of like spinning his wheels. I mean, of course, he also made a couple of misplays that's not helping him. Yeah, so I think I kind of want to... All right, I don't think I'm attacking with Zombie Army. I think I'm doing this just to get an extra counter on Sky Theater Shrieks and then Bond of Insight uh, to make it a three power flyer. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking. I want to get through as much damage with the Shrieks. This thing's getting in for three turns a two drop. It's pretty darn good. Yeah, let's see what I get. I'm probably, yeah, Cal's Dismissal is bad here because I can't balance Nurture. Well, I can, but it's not good because he just gains life. But for some reason, I still take Cal's Dismissal. And by the way, I finally realized that I was playing this card wrong. I was clicking on my opponent to mill him for four, but really you should be milling yourself to give yourself a wider range of... Uh, uh, to, to give yourself a wider range of cards to choose from. Yeah, so here I use Cal's Dismissal to get a, to get this uh, Dead Toucher out of the way, and I'm thinking that without Mills to mix those cruelty, I can just go on next turn. And getting in for 11 is pretty sweet. But that's strange. Maybe maybe I would have played that a little differently. I, you could have also justified taking uh, Aid the Fallen. Yeah, you know what? I should have taken Aid the Fallen to get back Sarkhan. I completely didn't see that. But at this point, it doesn't really matter because I'm so far ahead that I could win with any combination of card advantage. And having a set, and by the way, it, for the life of me, I don't understand why he doesn't replay Crawl Stinger here. Uh, to, you know, trade with the zombie army because he can't double block it. So my opponent's definitely new. Uh, anyway, I end up winning this game even though I started a little bit behind. Just fast forward, and yeah, I'm just doing all sorts of silly things. I drew a Lazatap Reaver and I played it to a Master Eight. 
And I guess I could still like sack Spellkeeper, get Aid the Fallen to get back Sarkhan and something else. So I'm, I'm just comboing off in all sorts of ways. And again, by turn 11, opponent did not find the other land. Yeah, so this is pretty pretty easy. Yeah, just plays another call stinger. So yeah, so he taps out for goblin assault team and call stinger. And here he doesn't even see that uh, I just have lethal with the number of attackers. I really didn't need to show him cruelty at all. I don't know why I did. Yeah. Yeah, so this is pretty straightforward. In terms of sideboarding, I don't think I changed anything. Maybe an unlikely aid against the death touch. Yeah, I don't think I changed anything. Okay, so he's mulliganing, mulliganing to six, and it looks like I'm keeping this because of uh, Cal's dismissal. And three chances of finding a swamp. I think I got mana screwed pretty pretty bad this game. Let me just straightforward a little bit. Uh, or fast forward, I should say. Yeah, so he plays Chrono Triangler, I Cal's dismissal it. Still can't find a land. Just playing my third island and passing. He keeps developing. Okay, so he plays. Uh, Vivian's Grizzly passes the turn to me. I play Mana Geo and Squire 1, trying to find my Swamp, and I do, and I leave it on top. I pass the turn. He plays a 1-3, and this is Triumph. Sorry, this is a bit like speed chess, but honestly, when I watch these draft videos, I just kind of want to see the meet. I don't want to spend a lot of time, you know, waiting for players to make line drops. And the opponent is... Attacking with both. Okay, so it's the trade here because I'm thinking that, you know, three removal spells. Okay, never mind. He changed his mind and kept back the Grizzly. Yeah, so I think at some point I do find a second source. But here I actually opt for Total the Invasion. I'm thinking that I'm at 20 or I'm at 18 life. And if I take like a few hits, it doesn't matter. Here I actually make a mistake. I, I laugh at my opponent's hand and without thinking, I take the Arboreal Grazer when I really should have taken the Artifact Hate card because my mana geode is my only source of black mana right now. I do have a Swamp on top. Or I don't. Oh, actually I bottomed the Swamp because I'm thinking I have a mana geode. And I need to find the second source of red for Sarkin. Yeah, I actually, I actually bottomed the swamp. I just, rem I just remembered this. And then this is kind of like this is one of the big mistakes I made during during the course of this game. And my opponent did the right thing by blowing up my mana geode and trying to mana screen me. But I, I'm pretty sure I topped up the swamp quite quite soon after that. And then I was able to play my removal consistently. No attacks. Beats me. I mean, there's no like blue spell that lets me trade profitably with uh, Grizzly, even as a three four. All right. So here I happily rouse Adverse in search of, uh, <laughs> I guess, my second source of red. And in response, I think my opponent kills my Mana Geode. So here I have to pick one of these. I can't uh, bottom both. And looking at my Graveyard, I'm seeing two spells. And I'm not sure. I'm, I'm thinking, yeah, I took a Bond of Insight to get back Rouse Outburst. Plus, like, a Cal's Dismissal to, to slim down the Grizzly if I need to. And then before the end of my turn, he destroys the Mana Geode. And this is when I realized, oh, crap, you know. I, I thought this was the, the Force Landing. I, I mixed them up. I'm just, I'm so not used to seeing opponents play Return to Nature, almost. 
ever, I don't think this is the first time I saw it in play, that it kind of didn't register. And I made the mistake of uh, taking Arboreal Grazer is just a stupid thing that blocks my flyers. I think I have a couple. Okay, and here he just plays Sarkin's Catharsis. He finally starts attacking with Grizzly and Crunch. Happen trade. We get top deck a swamp here. And I just immediately, uh, yeah, so I got my swamp. And I want to minimize damage. And this also makes it so that my opponent does not have the activation. And then I pass the turn. So this is my opponent passing the turn back to me. So now turn eight, I go Bond of Insight. Getting back, I believe, Callous Dismissal. And I guess I took out Mixos' Cruelty because I don't have a, I don't have a, a mountain, but I got greedy and I took Callous out first. <laughs> uh, no red mana. Actually, not only that, no red mana. One of my fixers in my graveyard being a mana geode. And uh, yeah, I decided to take the red card that I can't play. Smart, smart, smart. All right, so there's a lonely, lonely Jang. Here, I think I kind of blank it. I just have to play Spark Reaper and pass the turn. Okay, opponent plays Goblin Assassin and puts a counter on it, passes the turn back to me. I get Tyrant Scorn, and this is where I kill Jang. 17 cards left in my deck, so at this point, very high chance of finding a, a second Swamp so I could double spell. Decent chance of finding one of my uh, two Mountains or the Globe. And now I think I get the Mountain, or no, Tamiyo's Epiphany. Yeah, with the Tamiyo's Epiphany, I find the Mountain, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, so I actually, I actually put both the Mountains on top. I bottom the Blast Zone, I think. I don't remember what I do. Yeah. Oh no, I kept the I kept the blast zone. Got rid of the guild globe. And then left and then kept both mountains on top for Sarkin. Now I have to discard a card actually because I have eight. And I think I discarded the Rouse Outburst. Yeah, I, I end up discount this <laughs> I end up discarding Rouse Outburst that I ended up getting back as one of the two cards off uh, Bond of Insight, which is kind of funny. Just shows how greedy you are. In fact, I think maybe one of those turns I could have just, I could have actually played Callous Dismissal had I taken it instead of a Rouse Outburst to bounce like, I don't know, Goblin Assailant instead of, instead of using a, a premium removal spell on him. But anyway, so here I play Second Mountain and I, for some reason, I, I didn't play Sarkhan. I felt like Cyclops uh, allows me to get damage through sooner. And with, with so much removal, I, I can actually afford to like draw some uh, removal spell towards uh, Cyclops Electromancer if he has it rather than Sarkhan. And just, you know, all the Obnixilis' cruelties in the world. So funny thing about Blast Zone, if you read the card carefully, as I should have, it says, this thing comes onto the battlefield with one charge counter. So if you want to kill it, one drop. You don't need to put another counter on it. You just tap three and tap it, and then you kill the one one. Or sorry, the one mana creature, I should say. But of course, that's not how I played the card. <laughs> So here, opponent just kind of got flooded towards the end. Again, looking at his deck, not very cohesive. I end up also just putting a counter on Blast Zone to be mana efficient end of my opponent's turn. And now I immediately plus Sarkhan.
And I could also make a 5 5 and invade the city, but I don't need to because this is lethal. All right, so again, not, not much of uh, in the way of bragging because the first guy just conceded, second guy wasn't still figuring the game out. Uh, and kind of gone a bit too far. Let me rewind a little bit. Oh, yeah, you know what? I kind of screwed up. So the final started, and I wasn't recording an early part of the game. Apologies about that. Yeah, so it started right around here. Let me just rewind and uh, walk you through what happened. So the 1-1 one -one is from Toll of the Invasion, which got Rising Populous. Uh, at that point, he didn't have an Enforcer Griffin in his hand. He had something like a Rising Populous, and I don't remember what the other card was. So then uh, I had a slow start because I only had a 3-drop with Toll, followed by Epiphany, and then Obnixil's is Cruelty, Exiled something, I don't remember what. Uh, and now he's playing Enforcer Griffin, and he attacked me. I'm already down to 10, actually, so I'm taking a bit of a beating this, this match. And of course, roll reversal looks looks kind of sad. So if I'm not mistaken, I think I actually go on to lose this game. Maybe not. We'll see. I actually don't remember how this went. Yeah, but out of an hour-long draft video, like the last 23 minutes are in the finals, which is the only place where this deck was really challenged. So here I double blocked the first striker with a reaver and the bird. Take three, go to seven. And then he proliferates onto the army, making a 2 2, which I kill with Tyrant Scorn. Yeah, I can't even cast Bleeding Edge, so. I think I just, I paused the turn thinking that. Yeah, so as Reaper's on the stack, before he resolves, I decide to kill the, zomb the zombie army. <laughs> I think I was trying to kill the Herald, but I couldn't because it's uh, costs four. And this kills anything with three or less. So now this resolves. Opponent attacks with everything. I go to one. And then at this point, I don't think I have outs. Yeah. Even a Bleeding Edge just kind of Buys me a little bit of time, but it's not enough. So this is a concession. And in terms of sideboard, I don't really have good ways of dealing with flyers. So let's see if I changed anything. Chose not to. Okay. So I also kept this hand. Let's fast forward just a little bit. Yeah, so slow start for me, but I managed to take a little bit of damage and time score an atomic. So now I have access to Obnixos' Cruelty. I decide to do it on attacks. See, I don't remember what happens here. Okay, yeah, just a Spark Reaper. Uh, 
So now I, I decide to time use Epiphany. I know I'm going to take like three damage or whatever, but I just felt like this was a better use of my resources. I decide to put like all of this stuff away because it actually doesn't, doesn't help me. Now I try to play Interplanar Beacon to, only to realize that I missed my land drop and I already played a land this turn. Yeah, and at this point, I'm not feeling too confident about my, my ability to win, but I somehow managed to survive this match. So this gives me something that they cannot tap, and this means that they can only attack with Spark Creeper. Again, underlining that white is really at a disadvantage in this format. And the fact that he's missing land drops here is also helping me. So if he has the, uh, what do you call him? That eagle, he can't play it, he's one mana short. And here, uh, I just want to play as many blockers as I can and leave up uh, and just Rouse Outburst. Spark Reaple while it's tapped. And I think in response, my opponent taps the Strix. Cannot, cannot tap the Zombie. And I don't remember what I found. Invade the City. I should really take, actually invade the City because he can't tap it, but of course I take Spellkeeper Weird because I'm thinking I can like recycle uh, cruelty or, or rouse outburst. But in retrospect, I should have just taken the, actually, no, I shouldn't have, I did the right thing because invade the city would just uh, amass my army. And if he has like a spark harvest or something, then it's just an unjustified overinvestment of resources into one card. So now actually the fact that he played inform, enforcer grip in one turn late was significant because this, kept me at 12 light instead of uh, instead of going to nine which is more of a danger zone against the deck like this because you have the the what do you call it the tapper to gains lifelink so now i'm a little bit more out of harm's way and of course i have cruelty to deal with that as well And I think I just keep up Spellkeeper's ability here, thinking that I'll sack him end of turn, since my opponent is at zero cards. And I might even be, uh, yeah, I'm even attacking here, which is kind of aggressive, but in retrospect, it worked out. Yeah, that was kind of an aggressive attack. So let's see, I take Cruelty and probably Outburst. Can I use a Kithini? Let's see, let's see what, let's see the level of greed. Oh, I get one thing, I'm sorry. Yeah, I take Ral's Outburst. Never mind. Spellkeeper doesn't get you two spells. There's Sarkhan. I'm not sure, I think I play him right away because I'm thinking Ah, no, I don't play him right away, never mind. Because I want to impact the board by as much as possible. And I guess by drawing a card as well, off outburst. I'm also trying to goad the opponent into a bad attack because he's thinking that maybe the only way he wins is by trying to overrun me, by attacking with everything. But he doesn't fall for it, so here I just kind of zap uh, the three, two. And I don't remember what I drew. Okay, Gil Globe, just as a card draw, as a cycling spell. And now I on top, I'm pretty confident. Now I just slam Sarkin. And 
make the flyer. Also gain a life, not, not insignificant. Still don't think I'm attacking. Nope. And I don't use Aid the Fallen because I'm thinking, uh, I'll, you know, if he has a way of killing Sarkin, that's when I'll use Aid the Fallen. And I probably just don't even play anything. I probably just keep up three mana to keep up Spark Reaver's ability, draw a card and gain a life. And I pass. Because I know that even if my opponent has removal, he still cannot tap uh, the two the two creature the two untapped creatures because they're tokens, and I think he just passes here. Or ah yeah, so this is like a suicide attack, killing Sarkin at all costs, which actually worked out. Yeah, and I'm actually and I'm glad I kept up three mana here because it actually mattered. So. I gladly accept his like sacrifice of two tappers to kill my Sarkan. And I try to eat the 3-3 three, three actually versus the versus the 2-2. Two, two. And then he responds with Divine Arrow, targeting my dragon, and then I just eat the dragon. I could have eaten the dragon or Sarkan, it doesn't matter. I just didn't want the Divine Arrow to resolve. So it just kind of fizzles. Gained a life, didn't lose any, uh, didn't take any damage. And now I use Ral's Outburst. Or maybe even next turn, maybe I just uh, Goblin Electromancer. Something here, I don't remember. Spellkeeper Weird, it's Sarkhan. Yeah, I just decided to play Sarkhan again, gain a life. That's, the, that's still the right play. And this time I, I did play Guild Globe because I don't have three mana to keep up. So make another dragon, just a ton of value. And I ended up stabilizing and even starting to attack here, trying to put the game out of reach. Yeah, because next turn I'm attacking for nine also. Drew a mana geode. 14 cards left in my deck. Yeah, so the Enforcer can actually tap Sarkhan because he's a five mana creature. <clears throat> and now I just Electromancer, one of the tappers. I'm doing a mana count. Yeah, so this this game was is one at this point. Yeah, I'll just fast forward. Opponent conceded. And then <laughs> this is the uh, ugly, ugly moment coming up soon. So in terms of sideboarding, I don't remember. I made one change. Maybe, I don't remember. Okay, I guess I did no change, made no change. So Atomic, I pass, or sorry, Eternal Tra uh, Taskmaster, pass. This, this match game that I'm playing probably goes 
into the books as a record of examples of games where I should not have won. So instead of taking more damage, I opt for a taunt, told the invasion, taking rising populace. And now I can double block Spark Reaper. I'll probably just passed here. I just played everything out. All right, so this is where opponent plays Kaya and starts minusing, exiling first the Spark Reaper. So that I can't keep up three mana. And I'm close to finding a mountain. I think over the next few turns I get it. And now opponent's just kind of systematically trying to take me apart. See, like if I was my opponent, I probably wouldn't minus Kaya. And if I did, I would consider removing Sky Theater Strix because it's the only thing that can threaten it. I guess it depends on how much proliferate you have in your deck. But I think I accepted the double block. And he chose to kill my 2-2. So that trade for opponent, I'm not sure why he traded a 2-2 for a 2-3. I guess it's so that he's able to tap all of my creatures. And here I sacrifice a blocker, which is going to get tapped down anyway, just to make sure Kai is off the board. And now all I have is a lonely 1-2 to block. And I take four. Yeah, Bleeding Edge is a good one. I think I don't attack. I'm not sure. Nope, I attacked. Okay. So he offers a 3-2 for my 2-2. I gladly accept. I'm still looking for that mountain. And this is where I get the blast zone. And I'm thinking that I'm going to kill the law rune enforcer. <laughs> and the rest is just you know, like warning graphic content. The rest is really painful to watch. If you have concerns watching people three for one themselves needlessly, then please look away now because, yeah, it's sad too. I click on it here, I, I look at it. Of course, I don't read it. Do it again, that's so embarrassing. I do it again, just to be sure. Not seeing that it has a freaking counter. The little green thing that looks like an arrow, that is a counter. That is what it comes onto the battlefield with. And in fact, I can just use it here to kill Law Rune Enforcer. But I don't because I decide to put a counter at the end of the turn. <laughs> yeah. And uh, there's actually a funny story to how this, this match uh, ended. Yeah, so now I get Sarkhan, which is just wrong and i'm like all right i'll just kill the law rune enforcer and then boom you kill both of your creatures and you destroy land so so opponent takes some time just like laughing at me and i thought about like shame conceding but i figured no there's no reason to do that because if i top deck a mountain i could still kill this and this is where of course i spent some time in in, in great confusion trying to make sense of this and just Pass the turn as I'm crying. Uh, not crying, but just like feeling an overwhelming sense of embarrassment. 
So I'll take three, and I think opponent may even play something here, like another long run enforcer. Oh yeah, Rascal's finisher. And you know, this game's close to being put away, but I'm like, ooh, Ral's outburst, all right. Let's go one, two, three, four, and then praying for like a two drop or something I can cast. Find the other mountain for Sarkin. Play the other mountain next turn. Yeah, so I'm getting really low on life. And yeah, I just decided to go Sarkin right away. Again, knowing that my opponent cannot tap the dragon and he could suicide attack with everything to kill Sarkhan, but then I eat one of the Law Rune Enforcers. And here, kind of a fun thing happened. He passed. Yeah, there's, there's, I mean, the only thing I could do is plus Sarkhan. And pretty sure he gets tapped down by one of the Enforcers. Yeah. And then immediately I just rails, I think I rails Outburst now to try to find a spell to play to kind of fill out the board. And I'm not sure why I took out the 3-3. Three, three. I guess it's a bigger threat. But in retrospect, I probably should have taken out a Tapper. And then, yeah, here I'm playing Cyclops to kill a Tapper. I think after this, on my opponent's draw step. Yeah, so he plays Pouncing Links, passes the turn. And then I was debating between making just killing Sarkhan, making a dragon, or trying to get more value from him uh, over the course of the game. And I think that decision kind of depended on what I drew. Or maybe this is where he just kind of stops playing. Yeah, okay, yeah, so from here, I'll fast forward a little bit, and what happened was my opponent just, sometimes people do this, like right now you see he's at 15 minutes, and then at some point I pause it, and then uh, I get back in when there's maybe like six minutes or something left, so instead of playing it out, he just got very frustrated and decided to let, let the timeout run down. I'm seeing maybe there's like a message from him that, you know, be right back or something. Yeah, so it's six minutes. It's when it uh, automatically times out, and this is how I got my 12th trophy. So not exactly a prime example of a 3-0 draft, but a trophy is a trophy, and I uh, hope you guys enjoy that, and I'll see you next time.